for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins in the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff the Mad Cheese as always. Got the official Madden 23 team overall ratings today. Offense, defense, all that. I'm going to go over every single one. I'm going to tell you guys where I agree with and what I think the EA Woo! messed up. Other than that, if you guys want to see more videos like this, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Let's get right into the video. So I'm going to start off with the top 10 and work my way down. You can see it has overall here, defense, offense, special teams. I'll break that down later in the video. But looking at the top 10 teams, and I think we have like the top 14 teams here, but that's fine. The Buccaneers, I don't have a problem with them being number one, but I do have a problem with them being number one by three whole points, especially four whole points ahead of the Super Bowl champion Rams. 30 yards to win the game. Matt Gape boots it through. So that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. They're not three points higher than any other team, especially when you look at, that's the exact same ring that they started Madden 22 with. In my opinion, a much better roster when they were the Super Bowl champions, when they had, um, you know, Antonio Brown, they had uh, Rob Gronkowski, they had, you know, more running backs than they have now. All that's gone. And for some reason, they still have the best offense as well by three whole points, which makes no sense, considering they're down to pretty much, you know, two receivers, no tight end, Tom Brady, a pretty good line, and a, I mean, one of the better lines, but ultimately, uh, um, you know, it's just that it's not the same roster. I don't understand why they come up with this. Now, they did add some pieces to the, to the defense, but you can see that the defense is much lower rated than 85. So, to me, these overall ratings really don't add up. I mean, there are some, like if you look at the Bills, they're at 89 overall, 88 defense, 89 offense. Okay, well, that averages out. That's half the roster. That makes about sense, some sense that there, there would be an 89 overall. But ultimately, it really seems like they just make up the overall when it comes to this, and it doesn't really have to add up at all. So let's just continue on. The Bills, I probably feel like the Bills are definitely one of the best rosters. I don't have a problem with them being number two. The Rams, number three, that is not bad. Although, to me, they didn't really lose as much as some people might think. You could argue that they gained more than they lost. I mean, they lost Von Miller, but ultimately they replaced him with an all-pro and Bob Wagner so it's like they really just kind of swapped out a superstar there they swapped out receivers they, 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 to me they're, they're still a very strong roster then you get to the Packers the Packers are 88 overall I don't really have an issue with that I know that they for the most part they just don't really have a good receiving core everything else is pretty solid same thing with the Ravens no receiving core but everything else is really strong uh, Chargers now I have a slight you know issue with the Chargers uh, being ahead of the Chiefs and the Niners, who I think were both in championship games last year, the NFC and the AFC championship games last year. Chargers haven't even made playoffs. I know they look great, and everybody's kind of, you know, riding them for whatever reason, but let them actually do it first, you know what I mean, instead of putting them ahead of these established teams that are always in deep contention in the playoffs. Then you got the Cowboys, which I feel like they lost a lot in the offseason. So, you know, some people argue A6 probably isn't too bad, but ultimately, I do feel like um, when, you have, when you're ahead of a team like the Bengals, who easily, you know, they went to the Super Bowl last year, and then they went out and improved their roster for the most part, when, especially when it comes to the offensive line. So I don't really understand how they're ahead of the defending AFC champions. Uh, so that's a whole other issue. I'd probably have uh, the Bengals probably somewhere much higher. I don't, I don't really want to speculate, but I would definitely have them ahead of the Chargers and the Chiefs. I'd probably have them at like an 87, uh, probably just behind the Packers or something like that, or maybe ahead of the Packers. It's really hard to say, but that's kind of a, a crap rating. Then we got the Eagles who were in the playoffs last year, and they made a ton of improvements on their roster. So I feel like they should probably be either ahead of the Cowboys or – you know, I, I do feel like the Eagles are going to win the division this year. I mean, I might be an Eagles fan, so maybe I'm biased, but they made a lot of improvements. They made a lot of additions to that roster. James Bradbury, Hassan Reddick, A.J. Brown. They had a really great draft. A perfect example of why this rating system makes no sense. The Eagles at an 85 overall. Their defense is an 83. Their offense is a 78. And their special teams is a 77. So how does that even make sense for them to be an 85 overall when none of their individual categories even make 85? So to me, that's, that just proves there's really these rank systems are just made up. There's no uh, statistical averages or values that account for this. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna move down here just to try to finish off this list. The 80 to 84 range is pretty much just like playoff contending teams, and I don't really have an issue with it. The Broncos, the Cardinals, the Browns, all really talented. The Raiders. I think the Dolphins are a little bit high because they haven't really done anything yet. I know they added uh, Teron Armstead and they added Tyreek Hill, which is like the big one that really made a lot of headlines. 
but I don't I don't know if they're going to necessarily bear that out on the field. So to me, to have them against have them ahead of teams that made the playoffs last year, teams like the Colts, who look like they're going to be even better this year, in my opinion. That's a to me a kind of a lowly rated team. The Titans, who were the number one team in the AFC last year, I know they lost AJ Brown, but I don't think they lost a lot other than that. And they did replace him uh, with uh, Robert Woods from the Rams. So they did definitely add a replacement receiver. I don't know how healthy he'll be, but what you know, whatever. The Patriots, another playoff team. Uh, the Steelers. There's another playoff team. So I don't really understand how they just vaulted all those guys because they have Tyreek Hill. I know they're going to be everybody's favorite in Madden, but I think that they should probably be a lower-rated team. Uh, even the Saints. I mean, the Saints have, like, you know, they're loaded with everything except for a quarterback. So I don't understand, you know, how they're ahead of them. That's really one of my only main issues. Uh, other than that, maybe even the Vikings could be a little bit higher. The bottom-feeding teams, we just move all the way down here. I, don't, I can't argue with any of them. All the 79 or lower teams make sense. Uh, as teams that should probably be on the bottom. There's some good young rosters in here like the Jets, uh, the Lions, the Falcons, teams that I had on my best teams to build list, uh, the Seahawks as well. But ultimately, you know, these are teams that are probably, you know, essentially tanking or not going to do much. So don't really have an issue with them. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think about that. So now we're going to look at the best offenses and we'll also look at the best defense. We're just going to do like the top 10 first page. We're not going to do the whole thing. But, uh, yeah, I kind of agree with the top two. Once again, I think the Bills and the Bucks are probably two of the best. The Chargers, I don't really think that they should be third off of the off the rip like this. I don't think the Cowboys should be fourth either after losing Amari Cooper. I don't think their offense is going to be as good as it was when they had three receivers like that. So that, to me, makes doesn't make a lot of sense. I think the offense is actually going to be kind of average this year. Uh, the Packers... At an 86, I guess that's all because of Aaron Rodgers. Once again, they have no receivers, so I really don't understand where that comes from. The Chiefs at an 86. The Rams, I don't know why the Rams. The Rams will still be one of the best offensive teams in the league. They should probably be higher. The Bengals uh, should be higher. They, have, they might have the best three receiving core set in the league. They have a great running back, great quarterback. Uh, I mean, they improve their offensive line. I really don't know where that comes from. The Ravens then at 84 is surprising once again, too, because they don't have any receivers. So a lot of these offenses I don't necessarily agree with. I think the Cardinals should probably be a little bit higher because they're known as an offensive team um so you know this this list here it's really hit or miss for me and then we get to the defense uh the rams yeah they're definitely right where they should be the packers no real arguments there the steelers no arguments chargers once again it feels like they continuously get a high rating regardless of whether they earned it or not but um, they definitely have a lot of talent i'm not saying they don't the niners probably should be a step ahead of them though the niners had one of the best defenses in the league last year Bucks, Ravens, I mean, these are all pretty on point. Dolphins have a really strong defense. Saints have a strong defense. Eagles should have a strong defense because of all their all the additions they made. Uh, commanders, probably, I would take the Commanders defense over the Eagles right now just because that's really their bread and butter. But ultimately, the defenses I don't have as much of an issue with. I would just maybe slide the Chargers down a few spots, have the Niners a little bit higher, but nothing really worth uh, complaining about. So that's it. That's the video. If you guys want to see more videos like this, hit the like button. Let me know in the comment section. Other than that, thanks for watching. Man, my shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like eBooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bits and more. Link in the description below.